Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and today I want to talk a little bit about the ethical considerations for what's known as the Mars cap modification or also uh, just expanded transmit capabilities on your amateur radios. Uh, briefly, the Mars cap, those are acronyms, and Mars stands for Military Affiliate Radio Service, and cap is Civil Air Patrol. And what that uh, denotes is it's a program between the military and civilian radio communities in order to communicate and have interoperability between themselves. People that participate in the program are allowed to have their radios modified so that they can transmit out of band. And when you hear the term out of band, what that means is the, uh, the established ham bands or amateur radio bands on the VHF and UF side, for VHF it's 144 to 148 megahertz, and on the UHF side it's 420 to 450 megahertz. Anything out of that is considered out of band. And radios that are certified for use or, and sale in the amateur radio community <coughs> excuse me, are uh, locked in either by hardware or programming to transmit only in those ranges. And they can be modified to transmit out of that, and that's where you get into the term Mars cap modification. Now, for a while, it's been known that radios such as B uh, Beofeng UV5R and other Chinese radios have been coming into the country with the capability of transmitting uh, between 130 and 176 megahertz and 400 to 520 megahertz. That is definitely way, way, way out of band. And in the case of the Beofeng, and, and for those of you that may have been paying attention over the past couple of years, the FCC has issued a number of enforcement advisories trying to stop that practice. And some of the Chinese radio manufacturers have complied, and the radios that are coming in are locked in. For instance, this TYT THUV88 they had recently acquired. Uh, when I got it, it, it was locked into the, uh, the hand bands. However, all you have to do is a couple of keystrokes when you turn the radio on, and it will now transmit 130 to 176 and 400 to 520. Now, the big name manufacturers, Yesu, for instance, their FT65R and FT4, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, FT4X, um, they can be programmed in, in the same fashion, just a couple of keystrokes. If you know the right combination, uh, you can set that up and it will now transmit out of band. Uh, and it, of course, as I mentioned earlier, in the case of the uh, radios like the FT60, v VX6, FT70, um, they all can be modified. You have to take them apart. You have to knock some parts off the circuit board and they will operate. So I guess the question is, why would one do this? And my whole impetus for doing this video was um, I had this FT60, and I wanted to do the Mars cap mod on it. And I had um, I'd been researching it for a couple of years. I looked at a number of YouTube videos and read a number of articles. And I'd kind of walk up to the idea, and then I would back away. Because it's the kind of thing that if you're going to be knocking hardware off of a circuit board, you can brick a radio and destroy it. And now you basically have just a useless $160 radio that is no good to anyone anymore. So I was pretty hesitant, but I found a video that was really uh, detailed, and I finally kind of got the, uh, the courage to do it, did it, and it was successful. But in the process of researching this, I looked at a lot of comment threads, and I looked at a lot of uh, message forums, and one thing that would commonly come up is amongst the radio community. Um, you've got people that, and it's a self-policing hobby, and, and I get that, but I would hear things like, why would any ham radio operator need to transmit out of band? And it reminded me of some gun arguments or anti-gun arguments I've heard before. And I would hear, for instance, and, and it's going to be no secret that, uh, you know, I... I uh, I'm, a, I'm a known user and abuser of assault weapons and other scary stuff that, uh, you know, duck hunters and deer hunters cringe at. And I've often heard in the gun community over the years, why would anyone need more than, you know, X number of rounds? Why would you need 10 magazines? Why would you need this? Why would you need that? Well, um, I've got my reasons and they're not hard to de to describe. It's not a not a difficult argument to make at all, um, but it's it's 
kind of a uh, kind of a closed-minded approach to things because a lot of us use these radios for emergency purposes and w what I mean by that is let's say I'm hiking up in the mountains and I've got my FT60 with me and it's pre-modification so it will only transmit within the amateur radio band so I'm up there hiking and uh, I decided to go ahead and have a picnic under one of the giant sequoias with my wife and we're having a wonderful time and as usual I've got my radio on destroying the entire ambiance of the event and I'm scanning through the channels to see if anybody's talking and I hear on an FRS channel because I've got it in there for monitoring. I can't I can't communicate on it. I can't, you know, transmit on it, but of course I can hear what's going on. And I hear somebody and they're in trouble. Uh, maybe it's another hiking party and they've got a person down and they need help. Now of course I can use my amateur radio to uh to hit a repeater and get the word out and get park service there to help out. But something to consider is uh, if you know FRS radios, you know that, especially in a mountainous region, um, the signal range isn't that great. So if I can hear them, they're probably pretty close. And if I had the ability to help them, um, that would be terrific, especially if it was a serious life-threatening situation. But having the inability of being able to transmit now creates a problem. Now, under the FCC rules, you can use any means to communicate during an emergency. Now, that they consider an emergency to be a damned emergency, not, um, you know, well, when the shit hits the fan, I'll use this radio whenever I want. I hear that argument all the time from people that refuse to, to get licensed. They want these radios and they're going to use them during some end of the world scenario. And they think they're just going to magically rise to the occasion and make the radio work uh, like a magician. Um, and that's not going to be the case. But getting back to what I'm talking about, um, so in that case, having the ability to transmit could be a critical life-saving tool. And thus, it's my opinion that we as operators, if we're going to be the kind of people that, you know, would run to danger rather than, you know, call somebody for help, uh, and a lot of us are like that, you know, if you can help, you're going to want to do it. Um, having that capability to transmit in that circumstance could be critical to saving someone's life. And I think, I think we should have that option. Um, I, I didn't do the modification so that I could use FRS and GMRS frequencies and airsoft or anything like that. That's, that wasn't the purpose for it. I have no intent or, or plans to, to do any of that. Uh, I have the capability on the radios and, and the FT60 is the only one I've had to self modify. Any radio that can do expanded transmit, I modify it immediately to do that because I, I think it's a responsible thing to do actually is to have that capability available to you. Because capabilities equal options. And the more options you have in a situation, the better off you're gonna be. It's just, think of it in terms of tools. The more tools in your toolbox, the more effective you can be in, in repairing a problem. So, it's my opinion, and, and I think I've stated the argument uh, effectively, that it's, it's not an unethical thing to modify your radios or have radios that can transmit out of band so that so long as you're using them responsibly in that regard. Now, having said that, um, I am almost daily encountering people that have radios that they bought off of Amazon.com, programmed them with crazy frequencies, and talk with no concern whatsoever about the fact that they're interfering with um, uh, other people's radio operations. In fact, in in my little town here, on my I'm on my side of town where I have my shop, I live on one side of town and the shops on the other. Um, I routinely hear somebody talking on the primary frequency for our local police department. Now, the geniuses that are doing this did not program in an offset, and they didn't use a PL tone. So, the uh, the the police officers are not hearing the uh, the transmissions. But if you have a scanner and it's just set up to pick up the raw received frequency, you can hear them talking and they they transmit music and they, you know, engage in all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, and, you know, that's the kind of thing that gives radio operators a bad name. But the fact of the matter is, I don't know how many Baofeng UV5Rs or other Chinese radios have been sold, but there's got to be millions of these things floating around out there. And some people, many people, in fact, use them responsibly and they're not a problem. You know, you got a few bad apples, they're going to screw things up for everybody else. And I'm going to do a separate video on the current situation with the bad press that we're getting over the thing that happened on January 6th. 
and the people that were walking around festooned with UV5Rs on their plate carriers while they were storming Capitol Hill. That's a whole nother matter, um, but that'll be a rant video. But back to this, Mars cap modification I think is a good thing to have. I, I think it's a good, cap, uh, a good option to have on your radio. And, you know, so long as you use it responsibly and understand what's going on, more power to you. Now, as far as doing the actual modification to a radio where you have to knock a component off of a circuit board, I'm not going to say one thing one way or the other on that one. It took me a couple of years to work up the courage to do that. So, uh, um, you know, if you feel confident in doing it, go for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's like I say, it's so accepted that it's an it's an actual purchase option at Ham Radio Outlet. My FT3, uh, for instance, over here in the corner, it's charging up. I bought that with the modification done because that's one radio I definitely didn't want to have to tear apart. So that's about it. That's my uh, that's my opinion on the MarsCat modification and expanded transmit. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Um, you know, but but again, if you're one of those people that's out there saying, you know, why would any self-respecting ham radio operator want this done to their radio? Well, there you go. There's one. Um, you know, there will always always be people out there that are sticklers for the rules. So. Nothing much you can do about that. So with that, uh, I'm going to bring this to a close. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee 73s, and stay safe. Thank you.